I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I play I video, video games. News from the Blue Mary with your hosts, John DeLuna, <laughs> XB, Weebum, Damn right I am, and Rob. Uh, Here we go! News from the Blue Mary. Hey everybody, it's your old friend John DeLuna. Welcome to New Sound Wave number uh, 93. We are seven weeks away from show 100, where we all wear tuxes and tails, and we have a hooker or two maybe on each arm. How about that? We pimp Well, out. I've got a tail I can wear. I don't know about the tuxedo. Oh, okay. And I'm, I'm fresh out of hookers, so I'm going to have to like, <sighs> figure out something new for show 100 already. <laughs> Um, this is a good show this week, guys. It's a good show. So uh, this week with me, Peter, a.k.k. Bweebum, new Rob. New Rob is signing in and out, so he's going to come and go. And XV, of course. Our favorite XV. The best XV on the planet. There is um, no better. Is, there is none better. No one. No one. Find one, damn it. And I'll call you a liar. It's a fraud. <laughs> it, it'll just be, in fact, it'll probably just be XV, right? With maybe a slightly different haircut. It'll be a bizarro XV, if it's a better XV. I actually want to see a better XV would be your evil twin because I would hate to see what that means. What would wait, that wait, mean? wait. So his evil twin would be like happy go lucky and just like praising everyone up. Maybe time, right? I guess bizarro XV. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I think in this situation I actually am the evil twin. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that's good. There's a no, plot twist no, already. The way around. No, I think I think John had it right. <laughs> I don't know. The nice guy would be the evil twin. Ah, uh, maybe. But then hey, how uh, is he evil? You're plenty because, evil, man. Just because you're nice doesn't mean you're not evil. Yeah, I'm sure like the most evil people in the world, in because the history of the world, were nice to somebody. Yeah. On their podcasts, I'm sure they were great, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Hitler's I Garden have, podcast I, I, or whatever. I, don't I mean, know. I'm sure Genghis Khan was nice to his wives, you know? Yeah. And Skype probably, you know, crapped out on him, too. <laughs> um, so this is a good show, guys. First of all, we're going to talk about all the price cuts. They're working... For hardware, imagine that. Talk a little bit about uh, World of Warcraft, the iPhone 5. Um, it may be close at hand. Um, we'll also talk about a new Wii system. It's not the Wii U. It's a new Wii. And your Wii just got it's smaller. Called the Wii Wii. It's called the Wii. The, the Whittle Wii. Um, and then we're also going to talk, uh, the big discussion for the week is going to be Sonic the Hedgehog. Will we get suckered into thinking the next Sonic the Hedgehog game will be good? I don't know. <laughs> We might be. Um, so first, first guys, um, as you know, uh, recently in the last week or so, we've had quite a few price cuts in this uh, great video game world of ours. The 3DS was cut by 80 bucks here, and by about roughly the same percentage in Japan. Still, it's it's still a little bit more expensive in Japan. It's 195 bucks. That's down 40 percent from the from the previous price tag. But what that's done in Japan has sent sales through the roof. In fact, since the price cut, uh, Nintendo has had their best month of sales since the 3DS launched. So it's working, I guess. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, do, yeah, well, you know, all it took was a 40% price cut. That's all. <laughs> um, that was the magic number. Um, and then in related news, the PS3 had a price cut. I don't remember if I heard about this coming or not. It seemed kind of like a surprise. Um, but uh, it was cut by 50 bucks down to 250 um, for the cheaper version, the cheaper tag of 250. Um, right now, there's actually a bundle now uh, with Infamous 2 that is $300, and of course you get a little bit more um, hard drive. That is arguably the better deal, but um, it has also sent sales through the roof up 400 percent um, on Amazon. How about that, you, y'all? You, you know, you know what the the, the thing is. I have my. My coworker and I spoke about, you know, he's always like, oh, you should buy a PS3. About, you know, that's not relevant why, but you know, he's just going to buy it. And I was like, you know, $300 is a lot of money. And he was like, what would it take for you to pay to buy a PS3? And I was like, if they dropped it by 50 bucks. And apparently I'm not the only person. Yeah, you know? I mean, 250 is probably my threshold point for buying yeah. a system. Well, yeah, you think about it. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, I, was, Rob. I was just going to say, it, it's very rare that I've ever paid more than that for any system that I can think of. More than 250 Yeah. 250 is a lot of money. I mean, let's not be 
It is. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 two, no, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, our producer Brian was mentioning the Turbo Express, which was a gajillion dollars for like a two-inch <laughs> screen. Oh, oh, how much was that? How much was the Turbo Duo? How much was the RX? Okay, see, see, Brian paid four hundred bucks for that, and uh, hell, I bought a Neo Geo. I was a fool. I was a fool, I tell you, a fool. Uh, I love and hate me too for buying a Neo Geo. So I think everybody feels that way. Should feel that way. Um, I will say this though: at two hundred fifty bucks, if you think about it, like the PS3 is a Blu-ray player. It's a sort of video game system. If you want to play video games, it's got a. Uh, I don't know. It, it yeah. seems like it's kind of a good value. I don't know. Maybe but, I don't know. I don't know. But well, according to Apple, you know, optical, you know, optical things are dead. So. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's Apple. I don't know. I, I think I think until I think I can still live with DVD. I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, Blu-ray is really um, the must-have, you know, versus no. DVDs. When when I switch no. from DVD to v, when I switch to DVD from VHS, all of my VHS players at home decided to a eat my tapes or b <laughs> stop working and c if I or and it, or not a C, but if I wanted to buy another VHS player, it would cost me like, you know, sixty, seventy dollars, about, about or a little more than the price of a DVD player. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, yeah. The only the only time I buy Blu-rays is essentially for like DC animated movies, <laughs> and then I watch them <laughs> once and put them on the shelf forever. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Nice. So that's like that's a good forty bucks right there, or whatever they cost. Uh, I still haven't even seen like Under the Red Hood. It's just sitting there. Ooh, that, that's a good one. You should get around to watching that. Is it? Is it a good one? I gotta see that. I need to watch. I it. enjoyed it. It's also on Netflix. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it? I have Netflix. That, too. That I would am be wasting, convenient. I'm it's wasting money here. I, well, I bought the Blu-ray. <laughs> I, I I have to buy the Blu-ray, or I'm a complete sucker. <laughs> Netflix now, and uh, I don't know. Just I guess dust my Blu-ray. Um, <laughs> hey, if you're into World of Warcraft. I've got sweet news for you. The uh, 4.3 patch is coming soon, and we've got uh, some details on it. So instead of rolling out a big update like Cataclysm or uh, um, any of the other uh, big patches, big rollouts they've done, they've kind of learned their lesson. So Cataclysm, uh, it was like a shot in the arm, and then subscribers steadily decreased. So now, with patch 4.3, they're going to roll out little updates here and there. So one of the things you'll get is your own fashion closet. How about that? A place to store your armor. Um, it's a closet. It's a virtual closet. It's as close to a house or a home as you're going to get in World of Warcraft. You should be happy about that. Um, also, on the official World of Warcraft blog this week, one of the features will be transmorphication. Am I getting that right? I'm saying that right? Anyway, essentially what it is is the ability to transform your armor the armor that you already own, um, into different looks. Um, again, they're going on a fashion binge right now with World of Warcraft. Why not? This means um, that you're going to have, you know, much more unique-looking avatars and such. Um, it's going to add a lot more variety to World of War- Warcraft, I guess. We need, to talk about, we need to talk to JD about this and if his fashion weenie is going crazy about this news. But uh, so I didn't when- need to hear that. <laughs> Well, I need to Photoshop that. Actually, I don't. I'm going to take that back. I'm not going to Photoshop JD's fashion. No. Work. No, <laughs> that, would be, that would facilitate like a change in lifestyle. Um, okay, so beyond armor custom, customization, um, GameSpy is also saying that another feature in patch 4.3 um, will be revealed, and it's most notably the Deathwing Raid, which is a long time coming. Um, and for players that have the ability to store various armor, like I said, in the armor closet, that will be another thing that will probably t- be talked about in the coming months a little bit more explicitly in a little bit more detail. And we will bring those to you on New Soundwave when uh, they happen, when those details become available. Um, hey, do you guys have an iPhone? Anybody nope. has a... No. Nope. No. Anybody else? Who? Yeah, there he is. What is that? <laughs> what is droid. that? <laughs> a droid. You ass. <laughs> um, the iPhone 5. Actually, I'm the ass because I own an iPhone 4, and I'm getting screwed on October 7th. 
Because um, <laughs> on October 7th... Just bend it over. Come back to Yeah, over. I know. This sucks. Uh, on October 7th, the iPhone 5 will come out. What, like eight months after the iPhone 4? Something like that. Nine months. Hooray. Hoorah. Um, it's unconfirmed, but it's all but confirmed by several sources. That Friday, October 7th, will be the launch date for the iPhone 5. Um, and unlike the iPad 2, Apple is rumored to be accepting pre-orders. So, um, with the next-gen iPhone at the end of September. So, about a week in advance or so. Um, they are also rumored to be ramping up production on the iPhone 5, as they should be if it's going to be on sale in October. Um, it's widely expected to feature the same processor as the iPad 2, a better camera, maybe 8 megapixels, and um, a stolen, or I guess uh, a shady factory picture that claims to be from the iPhone 5 factory, has been making it around the Internet. The most notable thing about the iPhone 5, based on that picture, if it's true, is a bigger home button, which apparently is so big it will al- it will allow for gestures. So the home button won't be just a button you press. It will be a button that you do funny gestures on, I guess. I don't know. They are crazy at Apple. Who knows what's going to And they're gonna saying happen. they're going to get rid of maybe like the home button or something like that too? Well, I mean, they're certainly going to – if they get rid of the home button, there's a – the thing is like where the home button was – or is, I guess, the home button 5, whatever it is. It's a bigger space, allegedly. So if if, if they got so. rid of the home button, there's still going to be something there where the home button was. Oh, oh so it'll be like, so it'll be very know. similar to uh, WebOS. Have you ever I, seen the way WebOS I don't know. works? I don't know. I mean, if, you had, if I had to guess, it would be like kind of like perhaps like another touch sensitive yeah. area. It just yeah, happens to not on the screen. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, because WebOS know. has the. Uh, has like you can swipe left or right, or right. you can use it as a trackball or kind of thing. So it's kind yeah. of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm regardless, people are gonna shit. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that's the. I mean, yeah. that's that's the bottom line. <laughs> Hip, hipsters and douchebags around the world unite and cry. And shit. We, we, we all feel our pain together. Um, you know what the sad thing is? Like, there'll there'll still be people like out there two days before camping out in front of the Apple Store. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> sick and then like i said they'll have their ironic beards and their tents and yeah okay guys fighting game fans unite and this is one for the comic uh, book fans too so i'm gonna lean a little bit on hopefully maybe new rob and xv if you have any comic sense ability use it now um two characters have been unveiled this week for ultimate marvel versus capcom 3 one of them is nemesis who people remember fondly, um, for the most part, from Resident Evil 3. Um, he was the giant uh, bioweapon that stalked... Uh, was it Claire? I think it was Claire. Or was it um, Jill? It, it was I Jill, I think. Was it Jill? It was Jill. Yeah. Stalked her. Poor Jill. Poor Jill. Um, all throughout the game. It was gimmicky. I think it, I think Resident Evil 3... Correct me if I'm wrong. New Rob, chime in. But my impression of Resident Evil 3 is... By that time, we had kind of burned out on Resident Evil, and it was kind of viewed as like a gimmick. Like, oh, it's Resident Evil 2 again, except some giant guy chases me. Yeah, I, th- I <laughs> All, think that's know, pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, so people were, people called like BS on that. But I think, from what I can tell, Resident Evil 3, like, over the years, has gotten a little bit better reception, I guess, where people kind of reflect on it just slightly more... Fa- uh, Positively, I don't know. I mean, what do you? What did you? What were your impressions of Resident Evil Three before we get to the comic book guy? Um, well, I, I honestly never played it myself. I watched my brother play through the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Spectator like, sport. Yes, like like I said, never been a big Resident Evil guy. I thought I thought at the time it looked decent. It looked to me like it moved a little bit faster than two did, but yeah, that, that's pretty much been my experience with with every Resident Evil. Each one is just a little bit better than the, than the last one, but still just not quite what I'm looking for. So yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I guess I played I think half of Resident Evil three before I had just kind of gotten burned out by Resident Evil. It was okay. Did they come so, out like very, very, extremely close to each other? Uh, I think Resident Evil Three came out within twelve months or so of Resident Evil Two, something like that. Ooh. Or it was like it was, yeah. it was probably right around. It, it was right around the point where you were like again 
you know, yeah. like, oh, I'm not oh, rich okay. to this. It, it was, it was okay. It was so close that it was like, oh, yeah. And and yeah. and Resident Evil Two is considered great um, yeah. by people who are fans of the series. Resident Evil Two is considered uh, one of the best, if not the best, um, of the games, just on its own merits. Anyway, so that guy is in the game. The other guy is Doctor Strange. So this is a character who hasn't gotten effectively any video game time, really. He, I think he's been here and there very rarely in video games. Certainly not fleshed out to this point. Yeah. He, he features all his spells, all his call-outs. Um, so, guys, uh, can anybody give like a little background on Doctor Strange? Like, What kind of character has this been traditionally? I should say two of his enemies are already in the game, Dormammu and Shumagarath. So... Uh, well, well, go ahead, go ahead, Rob, go for it. Okay, um, well, you know, not, not much I know to really say about Doctor Strange. He he is a sorcerer. You know, the 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 general origin he, he was a, basically at one point a jerk. Got his a brilliant surgeon, but a jackass. Got uh, got his hands broken and went to the mountains somewhere to find the ancient one beca- uh, and wound up through a chain of events instead of getting his hands fixed so he could go back to being a jerk surgeon, became the <laughs> Sorcerer Supreme of our dimension. Mm. I think that's actually the plot to Season 8 of House. <laughs> of house. Wait, awesome. doesn't House just doesn't House just eat, like, take a lot of pills and then he finds himself and then he just yeah, retreats over and over it. again? Pretty much. Oh, yeah. okay. Pretty much. Is yeah, that show canceled? No, no but it will going. be his last season. Dude, it's a, it uh, is a ratings... He's a ratings hound, man. People love that stuff. It's the same show, like, every episode, but it's just like, I didn't know there was a twist coming. <laughs> She's a man! Yeah, oh, okay. I've, I've, I've sit there and watched it and said, okay, well, it's quarter it's quarter to nine. That means he's got to figure out what it is now. Right. Which, which <laughs> it's either that or to be continued. Point. Real nice. Um, so, uh, yes, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Fun times. Hey, if you're if you're listening to the show live, I posted a link in the chat um, that shows actually gameplay, a lot of gameplay of Doctor Strange and Nemesis. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. He, he looks kind of overpowered, but it is yeah, a trailer. That's you what know. I was gonna say. It's gonna be interesting uh, on how they're actually gonna do that because Doctor Strange is supposed to be the end. I mean, he's supposed to be the guy. You know, if all else fails, Doctor Strange comes. And even, uh, I'm actually a little behind on comics, I'm about two years behind, but anyway, I'm reading uh, Dark Reign of Marvel right now, and even when he wasn't the Sorcerer Supreme, he was still good, he was still to the point where he could hold himself against, you know, demons and things like that, so hopefully they figure out a way to balance him like you Well, yeah, they figured out a way to put Dark Phoenix in and make her balanced. Oh wait, they didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's actually like a broken character in the game, oh, but really? they went there. So you know, I don't know. Well, the funny. thing is, I'm, go ahead, I'm, Rob. I'm, well, you know, I've never been you know really good at fighting games, but it always a uh, uh, Marvel versus Capcom as a series always struck me as a, a the kind of series where instead of going for a finely tuned experience, they try and make everyone insane and broken and hope it all works out. Yes. So yes, they just kind of like hope right. for the best. Yeah, well, so, I mean, uh, if they're all broken, then it all works out, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I always kind of thought the point was. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is the point. Like, I was having a conversation, I just to wrap this up, I guess, with somebody who, uh, with a couple couple friends about Marvel vs. Capcom. And one of them said, you know, yeah, I hate it when I'm playing online and I get caught in, like, these three-minute combos and I just have to, like, <laughs> sit there and watch the other opponent do, like, a 500-hit on combo on me. And I can't do anything. And the other friend said, yeah, well, but that's kind of how it works. Like, So that's kind of like how this game works. And that is very, very true. Um, okay, before we go to commercial, real quick. If you've got a PS3, you have PSN, probably. Um, and if you have $340, I've got a deal for you. Um, the NFL Sunday ticket will be available this fall on the PlayStation 3 for $340. You don't have to be... Uh, subscriber of DirecTV, essentially. So, if you like the NFL and you like spending your money in questionable ways, 
There is that. There is that. So when we come back, um, we're going to talk about a new Wii model, a smaller Wii, a Whittle Wii. Um, Mortal Kombat is doing very well. And then we're going to jump into Sonic. Will we be fools one more time? So this is New Sound What's the hottest 16-bit video game system with true arcade games, great graphics, real challenge, stereo sound, and the hottest library, too, with games like Altered Beast, Golden Axe, Super Hang-On, Forgotten Worlds, Space Harrier 2, Revenge of Shinobi, Tommy Sword of Baseball, Fruxton, Last Battle, Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf, Super Thunder Blade, Zoom, Thunder Force 2, Ghouls and Ghosts, Mystic Defender, Rambo 3, and more, Genesis from Sega. Genesis, the new generation in video games. I repeat, stay in your homes. Sonic 3D Blast has hit the mainland. The blue storm is moving unpredictably, spinning, smashing, gaining power as he tears along. If you should see an eerie gyration of light, move away. You may be witnessing the blast attack. Play Sonic 3D Blast on Sega Channel, the only cable channel with unlimited play of over 70 games a month. Call your cable company to get hooked in. personality game only on Sega Genesis where do we start how about his knee that's his face if that's his face what's this coming out, at least in Europe, for now. Uh, it is smaller. It is lighter, faster, more alive. It does not work with GameCube games. Oh, sad tomato. Whoever used the Wii for their backwards compatible GameCube games probably... Well, I, I sold all my GameCube games with my GameCube, so... <laughs> Whoops. I did. <laughs> you did? did? Did you seriously? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. Okay, I did. well, don't I buy did. this system. Do yeah. not buy this system. <laughs> well, I... I mean, it just made sense because it didn't, uh, you know, my GameCube was at my house, my parents' house. And then when I moved down here, I took the Wii and I took the controllers and easy. (laughs) And a lot simpler. So that happened. I've used it once or twice, but to be honest, I've left my GameCube hooked up because the Game Boy player is awfully nice. Uh, Yeah, it's a bonus. There you go. (laughs) I can accept that. That's a bonus. Yeah, I never had that. It's so nice. real quickly, um, before we get to the topic, a couple things. Mortal Kombat has sold 3 million units worldwide. It has paid for itself. God, it was expensive nice. then. Um, yeah, nice. <laughs> um, well, they, had also, the, they had to buy it from Midway. Yeah, uh, but still, uh, wow. Okay, what did they pay for this? <laughs> um, like, <laughs> you know, anyway. It doesn't really matter, obviously. It was worth it. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. It's like, you know, F it. It was, it was good buy. <laughs> So, um, obviously, you can expect a whole lot more Mortal Kombat coming in the next year or so, I bet. Um, I wonder if they'll make a a game based on Legacy. We can only hope. (laughs) We can only hope they ditch all the graphics from Mortal Kombat 9 and just do, like, a digitized version of Mortal Kombat Legacy. You know, like the old games. Like Like Street Fighter the movie. Like a point-and-click adventure. Yes. Ooh, even better. Ooh. (laughs) Even better. Um, So, Yes. Three cheers for Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, by the way, is not well received um, with professional gamers and kind of like serious fighting game gamers. But what do they know? Uh, Mortal Kombat <laughs> sold three million units, right? Well, it's um, all like there's so, three million professional fighting game players out there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's probably like literally, I don't know, 
three that probably make like a living <laughs> off it, like a solely <laughs> off like doing fighting games. Anyway, so and- yeah, if your if your kid says I want to be a professional fighting game player, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Unless you live in Korea, then it's possible. That's true. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, new Rob, were you gonna say something? Uh, just gonna say, you know, uh, I think when when you reach a certain point, every industry ha- ha- has that place where there's a div- divide between, you know, what you can sell to hardcore fans and what works in the mass market, and that's really hard to deal with. It is. It is. It absolutely is. You know, because I mean, like, okay, so I, last point on this: uh, the Freddy Krueger DLC. Um, all the serious gamer, all the serious gamers, of course, made fun of it, scoffed at it, chuckled at it, and it, and it uh, from a serious gaming standpoint, sure, it, it it comes off as kind of like a petty marketing ploy. Guess what? I'm sure they they had a million downloads or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm sure tons of people really wanted Freddy Krueger. Um, so you got to deal with it. Um, last thing, let's see here. Anything else? No, I think we're good. I think we're Zel- ready. Zel- Zelda coming out November twentieth. Oh, oh, a reason to buy the 3DS. No, 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 Skyward Sword. Oh, reason to buy the no Wii. reason to buy the 3DS. <laughs> reason to buy the, 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 the small no. Wii Wii. The, the oh, little. gosh, really? There's something, like, inherently wrong with the Wii getting better news right now than the 3DS. What is up? Yeah. yeah. What, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, earlier tonight, Rob, you made a good point about that, saying that maybe the 3DS is having programming issues or it's just too complicated at this point to figure out. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I think one of the things that helped the original DS is the fact that you could make a really good quality game with a much smel- a smaller development crew than you can for the current gen consoles. Mm-hmm. And it takes a bigger uh, it takes a bigger crew to make a, a competent looking game on something with you know higher quality 3d graphics it's i think one of the things that has also held the psp back and the the fact that the uh, the normal ds could do you know 2d well and could do you know acceptable n64 level 3d again with a smaller development staff meant it was cheaper quicker and easier to get games to market and i and i think that that is a I think that is a factor that is being overlooked in basically the entire rest of the portable market. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and you know what, what makes that point even better when you think about it? Uh, I absolutely agree with you. And you think about it like there is a place now where you can do a cheap game with a handful of people. It's a cell phone. So mm-hmm. it's the Android and the yeah. iPhone. Yeah, and, and you can make a off. lot of money. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can do just fine. I'm, a, I'm, um, also, curi- I'm also curious oh, if uh, how... How much the 3D element actually plays into developing the 3DS? Because when you do like a, you know like a post production 3D thing for films, people got to sit there you know and make it so it looks right, so it doesn't look all bizarre. I'm wondering if that if that actually uh, I'm, if that's I'm the waiting. same way. So uh, I'm not completely sure, but I'm not sure if every 3DS game to date, like all two and a half of them or whatever are three <laughs> games but i'm waiting i'm waiting for the day and i'm sure it'll happen when a major publisher puts out a game and it's not 3d on the 3ds and it's just kind of like well, yeah. i mean that's going to be a game. breakthrough moment because i think what the 3ds is really going to hit its stride with is doing 2d games in the ds style taking advantage of the higher power of the system yeah and yeah. and in the case of the ds uh again I honestly thought that when the DS really took off is when it overcame the touchscreen gimmick. When it st- uh, ceased, be- when people ceased making games that were, "Hey, look at this neat new idea," and actually made right. games for the damn thing. Right, like touch here and touch there. Right, right. Yes, yeah, that's what so, she said. Oh, <laughs> damn, I had to say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, real quick before we jump to Sonic, um, Arkham City. Another update, another villain. This one not as grotesque as the Penguin, thankfully. Um, Mr. Freeze. And so if you're listening, watching live, um, you have a link in the chat window to go watch the trailer for Mr. Freeze now. Going out. Topic for the week. There's a new Sonic game coming out, guys. Oh, happy day, happy day. Sonic is about 20 years old, if you want to know. And to celebrate it, we're going to have a game called Sonic Generations. Um, there is a trailer out there. I will post it in the chat. 
Um, I will before we delve into the discussion on just where is Sonic now, kind of like our Metroid conversation last week. It's another one, good one. Lots of big games are having anniversaries uh, in the last year or so. Anyway, the premise of Sonic Generations is the current Sonic, the the sucky, often disappointing Sonic, somehow <laughs> travels through time. Uh, he probably goes like he goes so fast he travels through time. Just like and Superman. He, just like Superman, and he meets right. the classic Sonic from the first game, who is uh, awesomely a little shorter and a little pudgier <laughs> for whatever reason, just so he can be different. Well, he's the- younger. He hasn't grown out of that baby fat yet. That's right. True. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I mean, it was back in the 90s, man. We didn't count our calories. Come on. So that's the, essentially the premise. Uh, <laughs> you get to play one, you know, one new Sonic, uh, modern Sonic, young Sonic, one or the other, but they both occupy the same game. This also, cleverly, gives uh, Sega license to go incredibly, incredibly nostalgic and essentially recreate, like, the first Sonic game. Um, but with new, obviously, 3D graphics. Um, so I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch the trailer. You certainly can as we talk. But guys, I gotta ask you: at when Sonic came out, I assume you guys played it. I assume you liked it back in the day. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, Sonic Two was the first Sonic game I played, just based on timing. Mm-hmm. I could never actually get past Chemical Plant Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. But it was nice uh, to play the first level over and over and over again. <laughs> right. right. Nice. I, yeah, I remember when I played it, my cousins had a Genesis. And uh, so I played it, and I remember not being very good at it. I enjoyed it a lot. I was just not very good at it. Yeah, the speed is really fun in the yeah. early Genesis games. Yeah. And they've spent their entire, the rest of Sega's entire lifespan attempting to recreate the fun part of it. But I, well, I, I do. Oh, I, I thought they've been spending the entire time since then trying to take the fun part away from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've tried nice. to recreate it in new ways. And well, so they've been taking the fun away from it. I, I think one of the issues with the newer Sonic games, you know, I've only played a few of them, so I, I can't speak to it fully, but I think they honestly, the ones I played, put too much emphasis on the speed, because there is more to the original Sonic to that. There are times when you have to slow down and time jumps and attacks, and there is some platforming to be done, too, and Sonic Advance 3, for example, tries to have have you do all of that at maximum running speed, and it just doesn't quite work. Mm, interesting, interesting. Oh, oh, yeah, hey, I should also mention, of course... In Sonic Generations, Tails, uh, our favorite, uh, our first um, sidekick will be in the game. Hopefully, Big the Cat and Rogue the Bat will not be, but <laughs> no promises. No promises on them. Big the Cat, disturbing, and Rogue the Bat, look her up, guys. Um, I don't even know oddly what sexualized. saying to me right now. Oddly sexualized, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Don't worry, so, Peter, yeah. you're better not playing. Well, <laughs> not safe for work. She oh, oh, Jesus problems. Christ. She oh, now is. I know who she is. Nah. Yeah, she's just... There you I, go. Yeah, Nasty. yeah. Um, thanks, Google Images. So, <laughs> the other thing is, like, yep. you guys have kind of spoken to this, but um, since the first... I guess since Sonic CD, probably, they've really started... They, Sega really started to play games with the gameplay, you know, add tricks, 3D here, um odd storylines there, a handgun here and there um, in some of the games. Is the original, do you think, if done right, the original gameplay of the first few Sonic games, Does that would that still hold interest? Would that still be successful today? I mean, is, is, that, is that type of gameplay enough, do you think, these days? Or were they right in trying to add an ad, at least philosophically? Well, philosophically, every, everything's got to change. You can't make the same game a dozen, dozen times unless you're, you know, Mega Man. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think if you were to do something in the style of, uh, of the original and got it right, I think it could be a success. I don't, I don't know that it's something you could do regularly, which of course is something Sega would want to do. But, mm. but I, I think a, as a you know, the occasional nostalgia product, a, a Sonic game done in the style of the original could be successful. 
Yeah, as a nostalgia I, product, I, I think it would work. I don't know how wide an appeal it would end up having, though. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know you know what, actually, you know what a, a classic Sonic game would be perfect for it would be a phone game, probably. Yeah, yeah. There's an expectation there that um, phone games, games on your phone, are a little bit simpler. Um, you know, they're not they're, the expectations like storyline or trophies, achievements, and junk like that aren't there. So, actually, I would think like you know, I think there's a port of Sonic in some form on the iPhone. I'll have to check. I'm, but. I'm pretty sure that it exists. I could have sworn that something like that happened. Plus, with a, a phone game, I mean, it's reasonable for it to be a 2D side-scrolling thing, which I think is where Sonic really hits its mark. Yeah, It's, yeah. it's too difficult to capture the speedy gameplay aspect of it in a 3D environment where you can't just keep running in a straight line. Yeah, Actually, uh, the newest release, the Sonic the Hedgehog 4, where they broke them up in episodes, that... Is that was released simultaneously on um, the iOS as well mm. as Xbox, um, PS3, and uh, yeah, I see that's a, that's actually a good point. I think uh, you know PSN, Xbox Live Arcade. I think those would be the outlets where a retro style Sonic game, a nostalgia appeal one, would really have its market. Yeah, and they and they tried to do that with Sonic Four. I played the demo, and and to be honest, it just didn't quite hit the uh, mark for me. They really didn't, you know. They they went for nostalgia with that, but they were not willing to go all the way and make sure that Sonic's controls were basically identical to the original games. Mm-hmm. There are just a couple of ways that he handles differently, especially when jumping off of ramps that just don't quite work the way they used to. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. That's, that's, that's unfortunate. It is. <laughs> uh, Sonic is unfortunate. <laughs> overall, <laughs> Sonic has said. had a bad time in recent years. It, he yeah. has. It, it's kind of a shame to think what could have been. Because, well, actually, you know what? Here's a question for you. Do, uh, when you look back on Sonic, look back on Sonic. We're old, we're old men. Um, <laughs> in hindsight, did Sonic ever really have a chance to be one of the great like video game characters of all time or was he inherently 90s ish and kind of sega ish and like just too trendy to be an enduring character i mean i mean what's your take on him just kind of as like this concept well Did let he me ever put, have a shot let me put it this way i watched the uh, syndicated sonic cartoon back then and for whatever else sonic could or was could be or was the total 90s-ness of that cartoon has just permeated every memory I have of Sonic, and it's not, <laughs> not easily escaped that. Well, I... Oh, okay, so... The Saturday morning cartoon was better. Ah, uh, but I didn't have as much exposure to that as the uh, weekday afternoon version. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, there was more episodes of that, too, for one thing. So yeah. Sonic couldn't pull a Zelda and remake themselves and wash everybody's brains of the horrendous Saturday morning cartoon that existed. There was also uh, Sonic Underground, which was Sonic and some other characters as underground rockers. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Chew on that one. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I, I think the issue here is that instead of concentrating and making Sonic what Sonic is and making him great as down the line, they just kind of diversified him a bit too much. Well, that's an interesting concept, but like, I mean, Mario had his share of weirdness, I guess. Too. Yeah, but but then they come back with critically acclaimed games, right? Mario games, like yeah, true Mario right. games. Yeah, yeah, like you know, Mario <laughs> Mario Galaxy has been you know people. It's a it's a great game. So, but then they come out with an like you know Sonic Racer or something like that. You know, they follow I, up Sonic and Mario at the Olympics with you know Sonic Racer or something like that. Then it it, it tends to dilute. This- I think the secret with Mario is that Mario had already been in a whole bunch of different kinds of games by the time that Sonic came around. And for the longest time, the only non-side-scrolling platformer there was was Sonic Spinball. So, <laughs> <laughs> And that was a classic, <laughs> as we all know. Um, right. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's an interesting 
thing to think about, especially when you consider. So okay, so Sonic was treated rough, like we said. I mean, and Mario was treated well, but he has also been in all kinds of genres, like all kinds of stuff. Even Mega Man has had his share of kind of some funkiness. But I, you know, I mean, the one thing I guess we can't like argue or discount is the quality of the Sonic games have just been so bad, like just so spotty. Yeah, I actually uh, tried to play one of the Game Boy Advance ones, and it, it just, it wasn't there. I mean, I couldn't get a feel for the controls or anything. Advance mm. 3 was close, but like I said, they were they were not really, that they were, they were not really getting how the speed and the platforming are supposed to mesh. There, there are places where you have to make blind high-speed jumps into the great beyond and pray you land on something. It, it's <laughs> really it's not Awful. a good plan. Oh, so right. What an experience. Wow. What an experience. Um, so I think on that note, we are going to wrap it up. Good talk, guys. Poor Sonic. You know what? <laughs> Hopefully... We can only hope that Sonic Generations would be good. Um, if anything, it's going to be like a complete nostalgia play. So as guys who also appear here and there on nostalgic podcasts, that can't be that can't be a bad thing. Um, until next week, I am John DeLuna. I am going to leave our chat with our, our, our favorite viewers and listeners who listen live every week. I'm going to leave them some nightmare fuel. I'm going to Uh-oh. leave them God. with some Sonic cosplay. It happens, oh, and no. it is glorious. Um, like I said, oh, boy. <laughs> that's the show. This is News Soundwave 93. Um, I'm a particular fan of Eggman cosplay, I have to say. Um, until next week in News Soundwave 94, I am John DeLuna, and we will see you around. Two, one, zero. Game over. Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. This has been New Soundwave. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Check out all our videos at tfvideo.net. New Soundwave is a radio free.